Well, hello there, Mr. Danforth. Hello. How are you, sir? I'm doing well. How are you? Doing good, doing good. Hey, Steve, how you doing, buddy? Good to see you. Oops, I think he's muted. <laughs> yeah. Right on. Well, we I, I hope you can there see. There we go. <laughs> I'm, I'm wearing a shirt in your honor, Mars and Matt. I hope you guys can see that. Got yeah. That? <laughs> hello, we'll have Mars. To get some, we'll have to get some Matthias and Mars shirts made up here one of these days. Yes, I would absolutely wear that with pride. I would rock that one hard. <laughs> Black, because that's my favorite color. Hey, that's the color to go with. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mars, looking good. Hi. Hello, Mars. Happy, <laughs> How are you guys? Happy birthday this week, huh? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Looks like you guys had a good time. You went out to dinner with uh, uh, Paula and some folks. Yeah, we did. Um, that was our first outing, real outing, outing out, you know. And uh, it was, we had a good time. It was a good time. Nice. Good. Good. I don't know if it's my camera or if it's me like being blurry, but anyways. Looks good. All right. Good. You're looking good, Mars. Thank you. <laughs> I actually just shot a video clip for a friend of mine. Um, you know, Matt, Ron Colbert, the guy that we had reached out to about the choir. Yeah. He uh, needed a virtual choir. So he sent me a track to lip sync to like for a Christmas song. So I was all doing that earlier and it's hard to lip sync. It's exhausting. <laughs> <laughs> Brian B. What's up, buddy? Good to see you. And John Teodosio. Good to see okay. you guys too. Yeah, good to see you finally. Yeah. Wow. We've got people coming. Yeah, we finally got people, some people showing up here, getting a good crowd. I'm nervous. But uh, Mr. J. Hey, coming to, I got to say, hey. Hey, brother. <laughs> coming How you to doing? us. Good, doing well. What's that guitar I see in the, just over your shoulder there? Uh, Is that a telly? Uh, Very nice. Very uh, nice. Custom, yeah, it's a custom telly. Ah, nice. I'll, Golden. I've got well, my... Uh, I happen to have my uh, Gretsch here, if I can pull it over without uh, making too much. Oh, that is beautiful. Yeah, got my Gretsch. Uh, Very twingy. An Electromatic. <laughs> I finally knew how to play it. <laughs> uh. There we go. All right. Ooh, Martin, Gore, Martin Gore was playing a beautiful Gretsch on their uh oh i forget which tour it was is that the green one or something i guess like a green colored one i think it's like a light green yeah yeah yeah, yeah that's, that's that goes to guitar that's the the 1959 gretsch anniversary special i think that martin gore plays he's got that and he, and he also plays a white falcon which uh yeah i i'm a big big fan of gretsch guitars love love gretsch guitars awesome Welcome to Mr. George Pappas from uh, Melbourne, Australia. Mr. Alien Skin and former member of Real Life there has just joined us. I think he might have his... Uh, yeah, I've been just trying to uh, work this out. Uh, <laughs> Welcome, George. So good to see you. Hi, uh, Jim. How are you? <laughs> doing well, doing well. I worked it out. Yeah. Uh, this modern technology is amazing, isn't it? We got... We got folks already from uh, Canada and from New Zealand and from Australia and from LA and uh, should have a bunch more joining us here in just a few moments. All right, the globe. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's uh, what time? It's uh, twelve o'clock here, uh, midday on Monday. Yeah, and it's uh, here in Utah. It's eight p.m. on Sunday. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Or, George, what city are you in? Uh, what city? In Melbourne. Steve, oh. yeah, 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 down uh, south, southeast, near Antarctica, almost. Oh, there boy. you go. And uh, for those who don't know, George has a new album that just came out a short while ago called uh, Cold War. Mm. Uh, uh, Cold War Pop, yeah. Cold, Cold yeah. War Pop, yeah. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Yep. In fact, while you're here, George, if you'll allow me, I would love to get you to do one of these uh, with us. If we could have you be a special yeah, sure. guest to talk I'd, about your alien skin work sometime, I'd love to do that. I'd, I'd love that, Jim. Yeah. yeah. Right on. Very I've good. had, the, I've had the, uh, the pleasure of meeting Jim, what, at least a few times in the States. Yeah. 
Yeah, when I was doing there with uh, with real life. Yeah. So we've actually pressed the flesh and done all that kind of stuff. <laughs> and I, um, uh, my condolences over your mum. I, I knew Jim's mum. We travelled from um, where was it, Jim? Um, uh, from LA to Salt Lake. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. In the van together. Yeah. Wonderful lady. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Yeah, my 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 mom was a as I posted earlier. My mom was a huge Kraftwerk fan, and yeah, uh, I know George, you're a Kraftwerk fan. I think most of us are probably fans or at least admirers of Kraftwerk. And uh, yeah, my my mom was a real real big reason why I got into the music that I did, and she was always so supportive of of uh, anything that I was doing. And I got to tell you, she absolutely adored you, George. She loved you and Danny and. Oh. David and Alan and she right, still, right, yeah. still yeah. talked about you uh, all these years later you know and uh, she had nothing but fond memories of of uh, getting to meet and hang out with you guys. <laughs> that was uh, 2000 wasn't it Jim I think it was yeah. 2000 yeah yep. Uh, yep. Since, since stock 2000 yeah yep yep the, uh, the 21 uh, nearly 21 years ago nearly nearly 21 years ago yeah yeah yep yep all right, we'll give uh, maybe two, three more minutes, and then we'll we'll get uh, started officially here, as we still have some folks coming in. Uh, the legend himself, Mr. Darwin McDee, is going to be joining us here in just a sec. So, and I think May is joining us, so that's good here. Getting getting ourselves a good little crowd here. This uh, is a good idea, Jim. Uh, you know, uh, starting this off, I think it's uh, you know. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, we've we've been doing uh, we've kind of experimenting with it uh, privately for the last several months, and we've had a really good time just kind of hanging out and getting to know each other and talking <clears> about <throat> everything from favorite albums and influences, what what software we're trying out that we really like, and, and things like yeah. that. Yeah, learn learn some great stuff and some great uh, creative process techniques from a lot of different people, and of course, just the camaraderie is fantastic as well. So, so yeah. All righty. Darren, are you here with us, buddy? Uh, hey, Jim, I'm here. Oh, there he is. <laughs> I'm, I'm in the car. We, we had a little uh, layover getting home from Vegas, so ah. um, I'll stay on as long as I can. I haven't seen my wife yet. We, we just, uh, we're about, we're almost home, though. Uh -huh. All right. <laughs> I like the shirt, by the way. Oh, hey, thank you. Yeah, I, I kind of wore it in honor of Matthias and Mars. <laughs> awesome. Okay. All right. Well, uh, I think we'll go ahead and, and get started. We'll, we'll still have some people that will uh, be trickling in here and there along the way. Um, first of all, welcome, everybody, and thank you for this uh, debut and premiere or inaugural, inaugural <laughs> edition, if you will, of the Zoom Spotlight series for the Soul of Synth Pop. Uh, truly uh, uh, grateful that all of you could join us today, uh, those of you that are, that are here. And uh, to those of you that watch it after the fact on the YouTube channel, thank you as well. And for the first time in my life, I'm saying if you're watching this on YouTube, please uh, make sure to hit that subscribe button and hit the bell as well. <laughs> so, um, but uh, yeah, we're, uh, Today we're, we're going to be joined. The very first uh, guest that we have is one of my absolute favorite uh, duos as, as far as synth pop goes. Uh, that would be Matthias and Mars hailing from uh, Canada and uh, Southern California. And uh, they're going to be the very first guest. And so we're going to have a little conversation with them. The first portion will be me just uh, doing a little bit of an interview with them. And then once that wraps up, I will open it up to you, the viewers and uh, live participants to ask any questions that you may have of uh, either Matt or Mars, uh, the wonderful duo here. What I do ask uh, for those of you that are just tuning in now, if you could please put uh, yourselves on mute so as not to uh, interrupt the interview that we're going to be starting here in just a few seconds. Uh, everybody except for Matt and Mars, that is. <laughs> so... Um, so with that, uh, we'll go ahead and uh, I'll just do a brief introduction. Uh, those of you who don't know me or that are uh, meeting me for the first time, my name is Jim Kelgard, and I am the host or presenter of the weekly 
radio program, The Soul of Synth Pop, which comes to you exclusively on Radio Plus Israel uh, on, as part of their Electronic Sunday lineup, uh, which uh, also includes uh, my good friend DJ Oren Amram and his Synthesize Me program, among others. And uh, if you're a big fan of electronic music, I highly recommend if you have nothing else going on on your Sunday evenings or afternoons, uh, tune into Radio Plus. There's some great shows on there, uh, including The Soul of Synth Pop. Um, I am a uh, music industry professional. I've been uh, working in the music industry for close to 30 years now. Uh, I've done just about every job there is to do <laughs> in the music industry. Uh, everything from uh, uh, songwriting and performing to uh, working music retail. Uh, I started up my own record uh, distribution company, music distribution company. Uh, I had the pleasure of working uh, with Paul Humphreys of OMD and Claudia Bruken, uh, formerly of Propaganda, uh, when they launched their One Two project, uh, I was the person that helped them get that off the ground. Uh, Martin Gore of Depeche Mode was involved in uh, one of the uh, tracks that we did for that project, and I've also uh, distributed albums in the United States and North America for Billy Curry, uh, of formerly of Ultravox, and uh, just uh, used to be a member of the National. Uh, National Academy of Recording Arts and Sciences, which is the organization that puts on the Grammy Awards every year, and uh, as well as the Audio Engineering Society. Uh, so I've been producing and working with music for a very long time. It's my biggest passion. And uh, really synth pop and synthesizers are uh, pretty much my biggest passion. Um, my favorite group of all time would have to be Kraftwerk. <laughs> Just a long time Kraftwerk fan. And of course, uh, all the all the greats that came after them, like OMD, Depeche Mode, Erasure, Yazoo, New Order, um, Pet Shop Boys, and so on. And a big, big Anything Box fan as well. And uh, so that's that's kind of kind of my story. I'm I'm based out of Bountiful, Utah. With uh, I live uh, here with my wife and my my three children, and my son John, who uh, is, also happens to be my bandmate in Eminent Soul, which is the uh, uh, the original music. Uh, project that I have uh, that I do on the side when I'm not producing music. But I welcome all of you to the show. And uh, tonight, as I, as I mentioned earlier, we're going to have uh, Matthias and Mars. And so with that, uh, I'm going to introduce them one by one. First of all, we'll have uh, Mars Ramos, who is oh, the wow. vocalist of uh, Matthias and Mars. And uh, we'll start off by uh, having Mars just saying a quick hello. And telling us a little bit about himself, where where he came, where he was born, and uh, all that interesting stuff. So, Mars, take it away. Well, hello everybody. Thank you guys. Uh, thank you, Jim, for uh, letting us be the first on the show. It's very uh, great to see everybody, and we're very honored and humbled. So, thank you, Jim. Um, I was born in Long Beach, California, so I'm a Long Beach boy. Um, <laughs> never really left. Um, didn't have to because here in Long Beach and Paramount area. You're just a 20 minute drive from everything you need. You know, you drive out, you know, what is it, east and you're in Disneyland. You drive up 20 minutes and you're in the mountains. It's, it's, we're close to everything. So never really had to move anywhere. Um, my grandfather, my mom's father, was actually born in the city of Paramount back in 1926. So we've been around uh, the area for a while. Um, he was born, it was a dairy farm back in those days. And the city wasn't even called Paramount, it was called Clearwater. And it was just pretty much lake and dairy area. And uh, yeah, so we've been stomping around this area for a while. Fantastic, awesome. And uh, now we'll let uh, Mr. Matt Danforth introduce himself. Matt, tell us a little bit Hi. about you. Hi, everybody. Um, yeah, I'm from Canada. Uh, so I'm from the province of Alberta. I was born in uh, Medicine Hat, Alberta. Uh, they used to affectionately call me Matt the Brat from Medicine Hat. Uh, so, uh, I have, uh, I have one brother and, uh, he's, we're very different people. He has absolutely no interest in music. He's really into horticultural, uh, things and he's a, he's a landscaper and quite successful. Um, I got sort of music from both sides of my family, um, from my father who plays the, who played the accordion. My dad passed away in 1991, and uh, my mom is still with us, though. Um, and I got music from my mom's side and my grandfather's side. 
uh, he used to play the fiddle. So uh, it kind of got hit from both sides. So music, there's always been a love for music in my family. Fantastic. Awesome. And I, I have to call out how beautiful those synthesizers are that uh, you happen to be surrounded by. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll get to those in a short while. So uh, Mars, uh, tell us just a, a little bit briefly, uh, what, what got you into singing? You're, you're the vocalist for Matthias and Mars. And what, uh, what, what kind of got you headed down that road? It's kind of funny. Um, when I was younger, my mom told me that I used to be able to like whistle and hum before I would actually talk. And when I was a little kid um, in the shopping cart at the grocery store, she'd be pushing me around and I'd be humming or singing. It's a small world from Disneyland. Um, and uh, as far as singing, um, when I was a re really young kid, I had really bad asthma and I was allergic to everything, trees, grass, anything you name it. And I was allergic to it. So at elementary school as a kid, um, I couldn't play outside in recess with the other kids. I had to kind of sit on the stoop and watch everybody play. And the way I kept myself occupied or entertained was I'd sing songs and make up, you know, little songs. And that's how I kind of kept myself uh, entertained. And since I couldn't play sports as I got older, because I was allergic to grass and trees and everything, um, my mom put us in musical theater. So I was doing community theater as a five, six-year-old kid. And it just kind of went from there. Um, started dancing and uh, clogging, professional oh, clog man. dancer. Wow. <laughs> I did that. <laughs> um, that was my little secret that nobody knew. Um, I did that from the age of like seven to 16. Did a lot of competitions. And then from there in high school, uh, just started doing the plays at school. And uh, in college time, so, you know, we started a band. We weren't really a band, but we just kind of hung out. And then uh, I met a friend who was very talented and we just started writing songs together and it took off from there. So in about 92, we started playing the Gay Pride Festivals and uh, it just took off from there. We recorded two albums as Digital Soldiers. And then I did an album as Century Blue Project. And I've always known Adam and Danny from MDA since those early days of the nineties. And uh, we started working together on a project, which was a Digital Soldiers Christmas album about four years ago, maybe. Yeah. And uh, that's where MDA started. We just started in the studio messing around and thinking, we should release these things. And uh, through that and through social media, I met Matt and uh, didn't know who I was talking to. I just thought this was some guy, you know, who had the Zoo in common mm -hmm. and when I realized who I was talking with, I was like, oh my gosh, this is like Matt from front and center. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I kind of went from there, but yeah, I've, I've always been singing, you know, from the time I was born. Fantastic. So uh, Matt, speaking of front and center, we, of course we have to cover that because I, I was a huge fan of uh, front and center back in the day. And that was, that was my first introduction to Matt Danforth and, and uh, I'll, I'll talk about that in a moment. But uh, Matt, let's let's uh, let's let's turn this to you. How did uh, I know you mentioned briefly a moment ago how you kind of got your start in music? But uh, tell us a little bit about more, maybe about how when uh, you really actually got into you know the, the synthesizer portion of it and and how it grew from there. And and uh, maybe tell us a little bit about your your uh, your time with Front and Center. Yeah. So I um, I guess I got my first synthesizer. Uh, which was the Akai AX60. Uh, I think it was in 86. And that was a gift from my mom um, for having good grades in school. And uh, my parents have always been very supportive. I mean, even when I was five, dad sold his accordion to get a piano in the house. And uh, because they, they felt that it was important to surround the kids with music just to see if there was any chance that they had a, um, a talent for it. And I did demonstrate some, some ability there. And so um, that was encouraged and then music lessons were kind of pushed. But yeah, I got my first synthesizer um, in 86. Uh, I had a piano, one of those electronic Roland pianos. Mm -hmm. uh, I had a drum box. Uh, well, it wasn't a drum box entirely. It was the MKS-7, which is uh, sort of a Juno 6 as well, right? if I'm not mistaken. So it's got all of the sounds 
uh, the presets from the Juno in it. Um, the, uh, the, the sequencer I was using at that time was just a MIDI dedicated sequencer, an MC500. And, uh, and then I, I start to hang out with some guys, you know, cause the synth community kind of gravitates toward each other in a small city like Lethbridge. So I got to meet some guys in a band there locally called uh, Our Society. And our society were friends with Ryan Slemko. And so I got to meet Ryan Slemko through them. And Ryan and I just sort of hit it off and started writing music together. And then Ryan uh, was wanting to move to Vancouver. And I was kind of sad because it left me on my own in Lethbridge. But very shortly after, I had planned to move to Vancouver as well, because that's where the West Coast music scene was happening. So I moved up to Vancouver. We started up front and center. And uh, the rest is history with what we did. We did our EP out there. And every time got played on the radio out there quite a bit. And we had quite a success with uh, quite a bit of success with that. Fantastic. That was nice. that's, yeah. that's, that's awesome. So uh, either, either Matt or Mars, uh, feel free to chime in here. How did... Uh, Tell us how, how the creative partnership uh, as Matthias and Mars really uh, came about. How did, how did that happen? Matt? Um, well, it started really with, with me um, sort of liking what was going on with MDA. Um, uh, I, I really liked what, what I heard with, with Mars vocals. Um, I was impressed by them. And so when I came opp opportunity arose for me to have a featured vocalist on my line uh, EP, um, I wanted to get Mars involved. And so I contacted Mars. I think we, I think we sort of knew who each other were at that point, if I'm not, just interject yeah. Mars if you want. No, yeah, um, by that time uh, I realized who you were. I was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> this guy wants to send me music. <laughs> <laughs> So I, I did, we, we, I sent him the, uh, the band track for, uh, I forget what I had named that song, just some random name, but it became uh, Any Other Way. And uh, that's, yeah, and that, thank you for playing that today. Yeah. <laughs> you are welcome. Yeah, and, that, and so that was sort of the start of, of where Mars came on my radar and we enjoyed working together and it seemed to come together so effortlessly um that song it just what he wrote melodically the top line um was just so uh, it was perfect it was what i wanted and um and and yeah we just haven't looked back uh, we decided remember, to make it yes i'm sorry go ahead well, we decided to make a, an official band out of it with Ice yeah. and Mars. So. I remember you emailing me back or texting me back, goosebumps, and I'm like, is that good or bad? Because <laughs> <laughs> it could be either way, right? Right. Yeah. I mean, was, either I really, really knocked it out of the park or it was really, really bad. <laughs> but I'm, I'm glad it was good goosebumps. So. <laughs> well, that's that's exactly how I would describe uh, the first time that I heard the, the, the pairing of both of your talents with any other way. And uh, it was on, uh, Matt, wasn't it on your, your line through EP that uh, it initially came out? Uh, I think that was the EP, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah, uh, no, line through line was out. with Karen Lee Batten. It was line out. Line out, yeah. I, I know it was one of those MIDI things. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. To total total goosebumps uh, from from me as well. I mean, the uh, just just the way that Mars' voice and just just how beautifully it glides over the uh, the synth work that, that you do underneath it, Matt, is just you know it's perfection. Love it. So uh, so Mars, uh, tell us uh, what singers have inspired you the most, and uh, you know name don't 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 worry about nailing it down to just one if there's a couple you just want to give a shout out to that were were the ones that kind of really you know uh inspired you i guess we could say well the obvious would be Alison moye and andy bell but um i really really took a liking to bronski beat and jimmy somerville that angelic falsetto oh yeah. i would love to sing like that and uh, <laughs> everything that they did and every 
song they put out and the music and just what they were talking about back in those days, as far as the society and culture of, of being gay, that spoke to me. So Jimmy Somerville was a big influence songwriting wise as well. But I remember as a kid, my family also had music around us all the time. And my dad would listen to uh, the Manhattan Transfer. Oh yeah. And that type of harmony. I didn't understand what it was at the time, but those, the way those voices come together, that inspired me and made me feel, you know, that I wanted to do something like that. Also like Cindy Wilson and Kate Pearson from the B-52s, the harmonies that they put together, amazing. Um, as a vocalist, and I listened to those, you know, type of uh, unique pairings or unique voices that are just blend together so well that they're magical. Um, but yeah, like I said, Andy and, and Allison really kind of uh, were the ones who I'd listen and study Mm -hmm. when I started understanding music. Right. I, said, I want to do it like that. And uh, yeah, those, those those would be the vocalists that really stand out to me. Fantastic. I, I don't know if there's any uh, any other artist I can think of that does a falsetto like Jimmy Somerville did. I mean, yeah. just, just otherworldly. And how could you not be captivated by that? I mean, I, I remember the first time that I heard uh, Small Town Boy and just the way that he just croons that falsetto is just oh, chills. There's nothing like it. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's that's awesome. So, Matt, uh, being being the musical uh, component of uh, Matthias and Mars, um, tell us about uh, some of the musicians that have inspired you along the way uh, and what specifically about them inspires you. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to put down a wager that one of them might be Vince Clark. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he's the first, he's the biggest. Um, but also like ABBA um, and Jar, uh, Jean-Michel Jarre, but mostly Vince Clark. There's just something special about the way he puts melodies together. Um, melody is first and foremost with him. Mm -hmm. And you know, that really comes across. It's all about the tune. Um, and also for the most part, his melodies are upbeat. They're very happy melodies, which really resonate with me. That's really the first time I heard this stuff. Um, I gravitated toward it because of that. Um, how can you not love that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, that's, that's the one thing that always amazes me about uh, Vince Clark's songwriting, his, his ability to come up with melodies that just, you know, the, the hooks just get stuck in your head for days. I mean, the first time I ever heard Just Can't Get Enough, that melody was stuck in my head for days, hours, you know, after after I first heard it. And that's that's kind of like the, the, the way Vince Clark is. I mean, he just has a knack for coming up with a simple but melodic hook that just smacks you right between the eyes. And uh, I, yeah. I, I definitely know what you mean there. <laughs> right yeah. on. Yeah. Cool. Um, so Mars, uh, if, if you would take take a moment and kind of walk us through your approach to uh, to how you write lyrics uh, for for the songs, whether whether it's with Matthias and Mars or uh, MDA or uh, what is what is the what's what's the creative process, the the zone, if you will, that you get into uh, when you compose uh, compose a song. It's really strange for me um, when I the way Matt and I normally work together is he will send me a, a demo, a really basic demo of an idea. And I listen to it under headphones and I kind of meditate on it and kind of fall into it. And when I'm in that zone, I literally can hear the vocal melody and sometimes the lyrics. I listen to what his music tells me to write or to say, and I'll listen to it a few times and start writing stuff down. And normally that's what we stick with, you know, but I can hear everything, including the harmonies and everything in my head, the backing vocals. I almost hear it like it's a complete production, like it's a done production. Um, it's just kind of weird. It, it's almost like I do fall into that zone and it just, the music tells me what to do and what to write about. Fantastic. Do you ever do a uh, is there ever an instance where you write the lyrics first and then, then, uh, then hear the music? Or there has been in the past with 
my other projects, um, mostly with Matthias and Mars, I'm really inspired by the music that Matt sends because he's brilliant and his music has so much emotion. It talks to me and uh, that's what really drives the song. Um, for the uh, When the Sky Falls Down song, it was actually, I was, we were, this was back, we were writing when the uh, Notre Dame spire fell down. It was on fire. Oh, yeah. And that, what they kept saying on the news, when the spire fell down, when the spire fell down, I was like, oh, I wanted to write something like that. And uh, that kind of started that idea on that song. And I ended up changing it to when the sky falls down because it was more general and broad as far as songwriting. But, um, I'm influenced by what's going on sometimes in the world um, and subtly put it into the lyrics. Right. I don't like right. to get too political or too one way or the other because I just do what the music tells me to do. Right on. Okay, uh, Matt, what are some of the, I put the same question to you, which is, uh, you know, what, what, what is your creative process when you're sitting down to uh, compose a song? Do you, do you approach it like Vince Clark does, for instance, and do it organically with a acoustic guitar or with a piano, or do you just go straight to the electronics? I mean, what what uh, what, what approach do you use? Um, it's not the same with every song. Um, I usually start with a melody that I've been playing on the piano because the piano is sort of my first instrument. I can play the guitar, but quite badly. <laughs> um, so I, I usually begins at the piano. And, uh, and, then, and then I'll, that melody will sort of inform the chord changes that will accompany it later. Um, and then other times I will accidentally, you know, in, in, in playing around on a synth, I'll accidentally create a cool synth riff and then the song will develop from there. So it really is different each time. Cool, cool. Yeah. It's nice, nice to hear that, uh, that you, you do on the, you kind of use the piano first because when I'm, I, I found that when I'm writing a tune for Eminent Soul, that's that's kind of the process that I do is I, I sit down at a piano and I either come up with a chord progression first or I'll get a little melody worked out and then figure out a bass line, you know, the, the bass part on the piano. And and uh, then when I, I think I've got something that's that's good to throw together, that's that's when I take it into the, well, for me, it'd be the virtual realm where I'm, you know, putting it into my DAW with you know, any one of a number of different uh, software synthesizers and whatnot, but that's, that's cool. That's, that's, that's neat, neat, good, good to know there. Um, so Matt, tell us uh, what, what, what are some of your all time favorite synthesizers? I, I have a, I have a feeling that uh, you like the ARP 2600. It's just, just, just a, just a notion. I, <laughs> <laughs> I love, the, I love the ARP because it's so gritty and it's bizarre and you never know what it's going to do for you. Right. Um, and I'd not, and I'm, I would be lying if I said I fully understood the synth, even <laughs> after all these years. Um, cause I think I, I got it back in 1991 or 1992. Um, so I don't, I've had it for a long time, but it still eludes me. It's just really complicated. Um, but I love the mini Moog. It's a go-to, uh, the pro one is a go-to because it has such a really sharp envelope. And lately I've been uh, really exploring the Prophet 5, which I just got. So that's sort of my newest baby. Right on. And, and for those that don't know, Matt just got one of the brand new Rev 4 uh, Prophet 5. So uh, we, we can all be jealous of him. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so, so uh, yeah. Matt, name, name a vintage uh, hardware synth that you wish you had right now. What's, what's, what's one piece of gear that uh, you wish you had your hands on? Oh, the CS80 for sure. Oh. I'd love a CS80, but yes. uh, I don't have the room, but it could also apparently it gives off enough heat that you could double as a space heater in this room. Uh, or you could fry pancakes on the top of it. That's, but that's uh, what I heard. <laughs> but uh, I would just love a CS80, but what do they go for? Uh, you know, $20,000 US or something crazy? Yeah, I, I last I saw... I think I saw one on reverb.com uh, a couple of months ago going for about 23 grand, something like yeah. that. So, yeah. yeah. So forget that. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's, that's right up there with a Jupiter eight, I think. Uh, 
Yeah. I think I think a, a mint condition Jupiter eight is now going for about twenty grand too. So, uh, yeah. So uh, Mars and or Matt, uh, tell us uh, who some of your you guys have been fortunate enough to collaborate with a lot of different people in your various projects, uh, particularly when it comes to remixers. And uh, somebody that I'll call out right now, who happens to be one of my favorite collaborators of yours, is uh, Darwin McDee, Mr. Darren McDermott. And uh, as my junior namesake, who happens to be uh, attending right now, <laughs> uh, will attest, uh, Darren's remix of When the Sky Falls Down is just absolutely epic. So uh, I love some of the collaborations that you guys have done. So uh, would, would you mind taking a moment just telling us who, uh, who some of your favorite collaborations have been over the last couple of years? You wanna go ahead, Matt? Oh, sure. Now, I mean, um, I. I don't want to forget any of the remixers that, right. that we've worked with because we've worked with so many. But um, with Adam and 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 uh, and Darren Darwin McDee for sure. Uh, I had I was honored enough to have uh, Matt Pop do a remix for me. Oh, yeah. uh, that was with my project with Mark Bebb. Um, and then in some of the some of the projects that I've worked with through the line the line trilogy. Um, working with Karen Lee Batten was an absolute joy. I got, oh, yeah. I flew down to Vancouver where she lived and we did the studio session together and getting to meet her and have a little photo op and a meet and greet and then, and then just watch her, watch her go into the studio like a complete pro. Uh, she knew what she was doing from the moment she walked in. Um, working with uh, Bridget Gray uh, was, was an honor. Mark Bebb, very talented. An honor, and um, my favorite is Mars. <laughs> uh, thank you. Um, some of the people that we work with, uh, Circuit Three, mm -hmm. amazing work. Um, with MDA, uh, we had some of the same uh, guys that have remixed uh, Darren, and we've had Peter, and then uh, Reed Hayes from uh, Reading Caroline. Mm -hmm. That was one of the ones that floored me um, when we got the MDA Couldn't We remixes back and I'm listening through and I hear Reed's voice and Caroline's voice and then Vince Clark's voice. I'm like, right? Oh, my <laughs> God. Yeah. I had to pull over the truck because I was like, oh, wow. <laughs> that blew me away. But it's an honor to work with everybody that, that we that has agreed to work on our music you know to take that time out and and take our music and turn it into even something more special it's, it's the people that we're surrounded with and the group that we've all met through each other and through you jim it, it's such a quality group of people and it's amazing and of course steve bliss right there we see steve we're gonna be calling you pretty soon to do some more music <laughs> Steve is amazing. Steve, for those who don't know, Steve has done some amazing work uh, with these guys and also with uh, the guys from Eloquent, I believe. And just uh, Steve is just one hell of a good producer, just an all around awesome guy as well. And uh, I'm sure we'll hear from him soon. Thank you. <laughs> all right. So uh, Matt and Mars, tell us uh, what, what are you guys working on right now? I mean, we, uh, I'm, we've had some great uh, tracks that came out uh, last year, what are what are you guys got uh, in the can, as it were, uh, or brewing right now? Matt, well, well <laughs> how come Tell I us. always get I always get the tap to answer these questions? <laughs> um, so we are putting together a full length album. And that's why we've been at this for a little while. Yeah. So uh, we've got oh, like seven in the can right now. Um, we're we. are We've got about we've got our eye on the magic number ten before we release, so it really is just a matter of knocking them out one by one. And um, but we are really excited about what's coming down for you guys. Like yeah. these are these are we. If you ask us what we're most excited about that we've done, it has to be what we're working on now, for sure. Yeah. There's one in particular uh, that's coming up that we worked on recently with Steve Bliss and uh, it just, they're magical. It just keeps getting more magical and magical. And I use that word a lot, but it really is. There's no other way to describe it. But I think it's kind of, the pandemic really put a, a, 
a kink in our plans because we were rocking with uh, Lionel Cohen over in LA doing vocals and then everything just kind of shut down last year in March. Yeah. And uh, when we started to resume, we were able to come in with Steve and Lionel's coming back soon. And it just, this whole pandemic really kind of stopped everything. And uh, we still were writing and sending ideas back and forth and hoping that, you know, this would pass and we can get back in the studio because, you know, as much as I would, you know, I'm technologically challenged. So I like to go in the studio with uh, Bliss and with Lionel and other producers to get uh, my vocals down. But uh, I think now that we're kind of rocking and rolling, we got some good Pan stuff coming up. The, the uh, pandemic uh, even ruined our first meeting, right? Because we were supposed to get together yes. and meet for the very first time in August. Yeah, Kim we had and I, we were flying out to uh, Anaheim. We had and Disneyland we were gonna, planned. We had Disneyland all planned out and then the pandemic just hit. So it just ruined that because I was really looking forward to meeting you for the first time in person, right? Uh, we'll have to still do that. Soon, soon. Yes. Yeah, we, we definitely have to arrange some kind of personal meetup for, for everybody because I, I would love to meet both of you guys and, and pretty much everybody that's, that's here in this, uh, this wonderful event tonight. I'd love to love to, to shake everybody's hand and, and chat with everybody in person. Isn't the uh, New Order concert still happening in L.A.? Uh, yeah, the uh, New Order Pet Shop Boys show, I think, is still happening. And yeah, because it got I have tickets. <laughs> yeah, we still have ours, too. So October, still got right? mine. Yeah. 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 So I, they might be splitting it up with two days, but it'd be a great opportunity for some of us to meet. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Definitely. Cool. So, uh, Matt, uh, to Chicago, tell us what you're going. Ah. Uh, Matt, tell us uh, what is your personal favorite Matthias and Mars tune that you've uh, composed so far? That's really hard. Um, I like, I like any other way, but um, I, I like when the sky falls down for its upbeat sort of cheerfulness. So I guess, I guess when the sky falls down, um, but what we're working on right now that you haven't heard yet, is I think what <laughs> has me most excited. So cool, cool. Very soon, yeah. Mars, same question to you. What's uh, what's one of your favorites? I would agree with Matt. Um, there's a couple right now that are really, really strong. That well, that I feel are strong or that give us that uh, goosebump. Um, those will be released soon. But um, I think everything that we've done so far has really moved me as far as what, you know, emotion wise and songwriting wise, but um, I would say harder than you hit because it, it was really about a lot of different issues going on. And it was literally about being hit as a kid and seeing the dramas in my childhood, you know, so really harder than you hit was about everything. Um, all the things I put myself through as a 20, 30 year old, you know, um, it just on so many levels, that song just has so many layers when you really take it apart and listen to it. I hope it, you know, makes sense to other people, but uh, I think harder than you hit is probably one of the most personal songs I've written. Cool. Oh, I love the lyrics on that song. Great, great tune. Great tune. So uh, I have to ask both of you, uh, and we'll start with Mars. What is your current favorite Erasure album? <laughs> um, or at least Nightbird. Top three. Nightbird. <laughs> Nightbird. Okay. Why Nightbird? Why, why Nightbird? Every song on that album, every uh, vocal arrangement, the way everything just comes together. Erasure up to that point was kind of putting out great music, but that whole album is just a great album from top to bottom. It's something you can listen to. And every time you listen to the song, whether it's in the car or on headphones, you hear something different, or I hear something different each time as far as little subtleties that Vince has, you know, on, on, on a sound or the way the vocals kind of bounce back and forth. I think Nightbird is one of the most beautiful albums they've put out. But the neon 
is a really close second. That album is rocking. Uh, yeah. You know, that was something yeah. that I have been waiting for, mm-hmm. you know, but um, I think Niper it is an amazing album from Erasure. Cool. 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 Matt, over to you. Um, the self-titled album, Erasure, is uh, it's just brilliant. Um, they take sort of a departure from the regular pop formula and Vince takes um, he takes some journeys into some sort of transcendental flights of fancy. Mm-hmm. He gets really weird. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I like that. I like that. And, um, but then they come back and they ground it with some good solid pop in there too. So yeah, I think that has to be my favorite. Yeah. yeah. Like Edgar says, a cold summer's day. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's great. Yeah. yeah, I, I yeah. the thing I love about the the self titled Erasure album, and I, I think Vince Clark described it this way: is it's like their version of the Dark Side of the Moon. It's it is literally best experienced with a really good pair of headphones and just putting yourself in a in a you know a, a dark room or with some really you know fun groovy lighting and just getting lost in the sonic journey that. Uh, that Vince created. I mean, it's literally like, like you say, Matt, it's, it's an otherworldly experience. If you really allow it to take you there, the people that only like erasure for their three minute pop songs, I know that that album's a little harder for them to get into, but there are still some great, you know, pop gems on there, like uh, stay with me and, and so forth. And of course my all time, one of my all time favorite erasure tunes, rock me gently uh, comes from that yeah. album. And uh, just uh, the, the first time I heard that, particularly the, the shortened uh, single version, just uh, blow, blows my mind every time. Love, love that one. My, my current favorite Erasure album, it's still a battle between probably Cowboy and Chorus. I, I love both of those. And we're going to be doing a, a special feature on the Chorus album in a couple of weeks. But uh, I just, uh, I... I like Chorus because it's the first album where Vince went back to being completely analog, uh, no digital synths on it, and uh, the songwriting on it, songs like Siren Song and uh, Love to Hate You and, um, you know, uh, it's just one great song after another on that one. And of course, uh, Cowboy, uh, their first record that they did on Madonna's label. In fact, I think the only record they did on Madonna's right. label. Maverick. Yeah, and uh, I got to see Erasure on that, uh, that uh, I think they called it the Tiny Tour. Uh, I drove all the way to Denver, Colorado to see Erasure play there. Um, in fact, Randall may have even been at that show at the, uh, uh, the, the well, I forget the name of the venue, it was on Koufax Avenue, I think. Really kind of a shady part of town, but loved, loved that album. Just uh, nothing but classic Erasure hits on that album. And they're, of course, one of my all-time favorite bands, so love love erasure um so uh mars tell us an interesting fact share with us an interesting interesting fact about you that nobody knows or that people may not know yeah i kind of let it out of the bag earlier the professional clog dancer <laughs> <laughs> i have a picture i was looking for i have a video too but i have a picture let me grab it real quick <laughs> i think i was maybe around nine years old in the picture Mm-hmm. Uh, that's me right there in the white pants and the red vest. Nice. And we were, yeah, we used to clog dance, me and my sisters. And uh, I still do sometimes when I'm buzzed or drunk. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It's a skill, but it was definitely uh, some of the best times I had as a kid. Because again, like I said, I couldn't play sports and I didn't really go outside. So I performed. I danced country, and I did have a little mullet too back then. Oh, so yeah. I, I've I've got the mullet rocking pretty good right now <laughs> myself. You know, <laughs> my my COVID hairstyle here. Uh, Matt, how about you? Tell us, uh, share with us a, an interesting uh, fact about you that some people may not know. Um, I don't know how interesting it is. I'm um, my day job is something that people think is kind of different for someone like myself. Um, I work with special needs children. So I work uh, in a grade 
uh, five classroom every day with some kids who are behaviorally challenged. Uh, some of the most challenging kids in our school district end up working with me and I try to help them um, regulate themselves. And, uh, and that's, yeah, that's something most people probably wouldn't imagine about me. <laughs> yeah. Right on. That's, that's, that's so cool. I am, I'm just, I, I, I've always been somebody who has had such tremendous respect for teachers and uh, just how, how so many times they're, they're often overlooked by, you know, famous athletes or musicians or actors or whatever. And I think one of the most important jobs that there is, is that of being a teacher, especially for children like that. So you, you, you definitely have some respect for me on that one, brother. That's, that's awesome. That is awesome. Okay, so Matt uh, and Mars, both, uh, and I'll, I'll let Matt go first. Uh, tell us, uh, what are some of your interests outside of music? What do you guys do when you're not in the studio making music or listening to music? What are some of your favorite pastimes? Um, I like watching movies with my wife. We're like in the moment, at the moment we're going through uh, James Bond movies. So we're having a 007 marathon right now. Nice. We're just, we're just up to a man with a golden gun right now. So we enjoy watching older retro movies and stuff like that. Right on. What are, what Chilling are, out. I'm, I'm a big Bond movie fan. And I, I actually am probably one of the few classic Bond fans that likes Roger Moore's movies. I, well, okay. I'll, I'll clarify that. I liked him up to uh, for your eyes only. I didn't like the, the two that follow that what was it octopusy and uh view to a kill i i wasn't yeah. so big on those but uh of course connery is my all-time favorite bond i love i love uh you know diamonds are forever yeah oh yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah and uh i i i believe you uh you're, you're a bit of a, a star trek fan are you not oh that's true yeah we're huge into star trek um it's embarrassing how much we're into Star Trek. Our, <laughs> <laughs> we have the Enterprise and we have all of the posters and, and Star Wars too. But oh, I was going to say, how, how does your partnership with Mars work? Because he's, he's Star Wars. I know he's a, as we can see in, in the background there for Mars, he's a, you know, and, and supposedly the Star Wars and Star Trek fans aren't supposed to be able to, to coexist, right? <laughs> well, I like both. So I think I'm okay with Mars. Right I, I like both too. I, I like, I'm not a huge Star Trek fan, but I, I do enjoy watching uh, the newer, uh, was it Discovery? Discovery? Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. I like that. STD. <laughs> <laughs> So oh, Star Trek Discovery. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so so Matt, what is your what's your favorite classic Star Trek film? Oh, four for sure. The Journey Home or Journey The Voyage Home. home. The See, Voyage I'm, Home, yeah. The Wrath The Wrath of Khan is still one of my all-time favorite, not just Star Trek, but one of my all-time favorite science fiction films. I love how they took the original tv episode and made it into a movie arc like that and of yeah. course ricardo montalban was just perfect in that role and uh yeah. to, to me that is like one of the best science fiction films still and for me it still holds up uh today yeah. as well as it did back then it's I definitely think. good it's really good i love it right on Okay, Mars, uh, I know we can mark uh, clogging off the list, <laughs> mm -hmm. but what, what are some of your other uh, interests and pastimes outside of music? Disneyland. <gasps> really? Disneyland, yeah. As a kid, like I said, that was like everything to me. And uh, I actually worked there for about eight years and that was the most amazing job I've ever had in my life. And uh you know, going there and just spending time there and being there with Rafa and she, he had, you know, for, is from Texas. So I think he had never been there to the point that we actually went for the first time and me being able to show him around. And since I had worked there and pretty much grew up Disney, you know, I had all these insider tips and it was fun to show him around. And this was that, and this has been here since then. And just, being able to go so not being able to go right now during the pandemic is just 
terrible. You know, I, I can't wait till we can go back safely and just kind of enjoy. We like to people watch the little, we sit down most of the time now and just watch everybody and eat, eat our way through mm-hmm. Disneyland now. That's, that's oh, what that's, we do. That's, that's, that's my that's speed right there. <laughs> right on. Okay, well, that, uh, that concludes the, uh, the interview portion that I have. So with that, I'll be happy to open up the floor, as it were, to uh, questions of any of our live event attendees. Uh, feel free to ask away any questions you have for uh, Matt or Mars here. And if you would like to ask a question, uh, go ahead and turn your video on so I can see you and just kind of wave your hand if you'd like to, uh, to say anything or ask a question. So uh, I'll, I'll open that up now and... Anybody, anyone, 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 anyone? I have a question for Matt. Hey, Matt, hey. how you doing? Hey, good. Um, you, uh, nothing to do with music, but you uh, are into motorcycles too. Do you ride motorcycles? Oh, yeah, we, we don't anymore. Um, I had posted a picture of me back with my uh, Goldwing. I saw and that. that was, yeah, that was, uh, we were into riding uh, for about 10 years, we rode and uh, rode all over North America and just really enjoyed that. But I had a few close calls. In fact, I did get in an accident with that Goldwing that's in that picture and it got demolished. Um, and I got, I got dragged under a car for a few meters and that was fun. So wow. um, we, we, I kind of lost my mojo after that. You know, you kind of, when you get hit by a vehicle or when you're in an accident, you, you lose your confidence. And on a motorcycle, if you lose your confidence, you're done. Just yeah. pack it in, right? So, yeah. Very interesting. Motor, motorcycles always creep me out. But uh, I say that, but yet one of my favorite TV shows when I was a kid was Chips, you know, Fonchi John. <laughs> <Dun, dun, dun, laughs> <dun. laughs> yeah. Gosh, now I got that stupid theme song stuck in my head now. I got to finish. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a big sucker for those old 1970s, 1980s TV shows. I just, just love them. Yeah. All right. Uh, anybody else have a question for Matt or Mars? I've got a question, actually, for uh, the both, of you, both of you. Sure, go ahead, John. Um, I really enjoyed a lot of the music Jim was playing of yours on the show today. And as Jim was saying, um, there's heavily, clearly an erasure influence and some really good erasure influences that. My question is now there's a lot, there seems to be a huge resurgence, especially in synth pop and retro in general, becoming very popular again. And I can speak for myself and going, uh, not in college, but I know a lot of friends and I know a lot of kids who are very interested in this. Do you happen to see any young people anywhere like YouTube or such that are influential to you possibly in any way? Um, I I really like I really like what Dead Mouse is doing. Um, I don't know how young he is. I think he's probably in his thirties now. So he's in his mid thirties. Um, oh, okay. Sorry. Um, yeah, I don't know if there's anyone contemporary that I would that I would say that is an influence for me right now. To be honest. I don't listen to a lot of contemporary music, John. So, um, yeah, there it is. Yeah, it's kind of hard, especially now with the contemporariness, because you have to weed through a lot to find some of the stuff. Like I, I completely ruled it out complete, uh, completely. I wasn't even listening to anything my friends were listening to until um, I came across a, a couple. My best friend and I were like, "Oh wow, there really is something going on," but they're very obscure, and they're, you really have to dig to find them. You know yeah yeah but i'm just def- i'm definitely open yeah i would agree with Matt. i don't really listen to contemporary music or really uh i listen to the music of everyone that's on the zoom right here i listen to our friends and you know um the music that everyone's putting out right now is independent artists just amazing music you know everyone's really got a groove and we all kind of come from the same place we uh enjoy the same types of music so you can hear the passion and the the creativity that they put into their music, you know. So I, I try, I try to listen to the radio, but I really I couldn't name any current artists, John. Yeah, totally. I I would throw out there, and this, this is going to probably be very unpopular of me to say this, but I'm a fan of the weekend. I I oh, yeah. I loved uh, Blinding Lights. It was one of my favorite tracks of 2020. I mean, he. 
he just, uh, whether intentionally or otherwise, he just really, for want of a better word, he tapped into the synth wave vein there and just <laughs> nailed it. I mean, and I, I, I just, I really like what he did with the song. And I've listened to some of the tracks that he's done on the, the album that that came from. And a lot of it is still in that very same, you know, synth wave retro eighties, uh, you know, pop, yeah. uh, synth, but very much synth pop, uh, vein so it's it's uh i i, I really enjoy that you know i'm not ashamed i would i would agree with that i i liked his his uh blinding light song a lot yeah. if, if you haven't heard it there he did a again a lot of my friends who listen to pop music didn't even know about this he did a very interesting collaboration with the uh french producer gisoffelstein actually and uh did a track a couple tracks with him that were really good because gisoffelstein is very depeche mode and so he brought in a lot of his thicker kind of like Moog-esque type of synths. And that paired with uh, The weekend's vocals was a very interesting experience. Oh, cool. I'll oh. have to check that out. Right on. Cool. Uh, anybody else? Questions for Matt or Mars or any uh, any interesting synth-related topics anybody wants to talk about? Any Anyone, 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 anyone? Fega, you haven't said albondigas yet. <laughs> Where are you, Fega? <laughs> albondigas. Albondigas. <laughs> Orale! <laughs> right on. Cool. No, man, I, uh, I've i enjoyed this today, watching um, uh, Matthias and Mars, uh, just really listening to their uh, music, you know, through your uh, program. Love their stuff, man. Epic cool. stuff. And your voice, Mars. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. I really enjoyed it. Really enjoyed it a lot. So, uh, no, I can't wait until I see the uh, the upcoming shows for the other artists. So, can I wait? yeah, it's going to be awesome. We'll, we'll, we'll have to get uh, your band on there. Tell tell uh, everybody a little briefly about your band there, Fega. Sure, of course. So, um, my band is called Neural Mo Neural <laughs> Movement Division. Kind of a mouthful there. NMD for short. So, um, it's me and my friend, uh, childhood friend uh, Claudio. Uh, we've known each other for gosh many many years. I'm 46, so actually we've known each other for about 43 years. Yeah, since nice. I was four years old. <laughs> so uh, yeah, we've been um, right now. We're really just focusing on covers. I mean, everything is there. We're just you know trying to put our own touch to it, so it's just easier. But uh, I really enjoy it. Um, now it's coming to the point. It's like okay, we can do covers. Let's focus on some original stuff. So. I'm I'm writing some stuff down, and uh, he is doing some stuff as well. So we're both mus we're both musicians. I mean, uh, we just really just started playing the keyboard because of the patch mode, but uh, we both like synthesizing and stuff, um, and uh, we're both writing. We're both you know exchanging ideas back and forth. And now that we're double vaccinated, I call it laminated. <laughs> we're able to meet up, and we're able to yeah share ideas and stuff. So looking forward to that. Yeah. Cool. Right on, right on. And uh, just uh, we got about five more minutes, about six more minutes left here before we wrap things up. But uh, just by way of announcement, uh, we do have uh, another uh, bunch of these Zoom Spotlight series coming up. Uh, this next Saturday, we have Darwin McDee and Mark Bebb are going to be uh, the special guests, and they're going to be talking about uh, their collaborations that they've uh, had recently and what they're currently working on. And then uh, the day after that, on Sunday, we're going to have the man, the myth, the legend himself, Brian B. And uh, Adam Collier, who I don't, uh, I don't think Adam's on, but I'll say it anyway. Hey, Adam. <laughs> of course, they are <laughs> known as Black Light, and uh, they will be my special guest for the Zoom Spotlight series next Sunday night. And then on the 24th, which will be Saturday, uh, April 24th will be uh, more all the way from Stockholm, Sweden. That'll be on uh, Saturday afternoon for those of us that are here in the uh, in North America. And then the uh, next day on Sunday, the 25th of April, we're going to do a special open discussion slash roundtable discussion where we will be reviewing uh, the iconic albums Chorus by Erasure and um, Speak and Spell by Depeche Mode uh, because both of them are celebrating anniversaries this year and so we'll have a, a fun roundtable discussion uh, based on uh, those two uh, wonderful albums. And then uh, coming up on May 1st, which will be a Saturday, 
uh, also a Saturday afternoon for those of you in North America. We will have DJ Oren Amram, my boss, <laughs> at uh, Radio Plus, and also a very, very prominent figure in the international indie synth pop community, uh, of course, because he runs his uh, uh, Synthesize Me show every Sunday from Tel Aviv, Israel, and uh, he's uh, such a well-respected uh, DJ and human being and a very, very dear friend of mine. So that will be on May 1st. And then on May 23rd, we will have Mr. Synthwave himself. That's right, Mr. Michael Oakley uh, coming to us from Toronto, Canada, uh, will be joining us for the Zoom Spotlight series on the 23rd of May. And uh, there will be others coming up, uh, as I mentioned at the beginning. Hopefully we'll get uh, George from Alien Skin uh, coming up here perhaps uh, in May. We can uh, figure one of those out. Uh, that would be a, one I'd really be looking forward to because those of you that have never had a chance to, to get to listen to George or talk to George, he's just one of the, the most awesome guys and uh, so so thankful that he was able to join us here today. Uh, so lots, lots of great stuff to look forward to. And of course, uh, my show will be uh, continuing every... And vice versa too, Jim. Vice oh. versa. I just, I just turned the unmute button. There it is. <laughs> vice versa. Thank you. Right on. Thank you, buddy. Uh, so yeah, every every Sunday, uh, the Soul of Synth Pop will uh, continue to air at its regular time. And uh, we've got uh, one of the special shows I'm working on coming up for the radio show is uh, a Scandinavian special where uh, I'll be featuring uh, all a whole bunch of uh, bands from Sweden and Norway and Denmark and uh, uh, Switzerland and so on and so forth. Uh, being of Scandinavian descent myself, of course, <laughs> and also for the, uh, the the abundance of just amazing uh, synth pop talent that is out there between uh, the countries of Sweden and Norway and, and Denmark and whatnot. So lots of exciting stuff coming down the, uh, the, the tube, as they say. And uh, once again, I just want to thank everybody for being a part of this tonight, uh, for being a part of this uh, debut. And uh, I apologize for the fact that it's kind of no frills, <laughs> but uh, that's, that's how we're getting to start. And hopefully uh, at some point I'll be able to invest in some proper graphics and, and, uh, and, and, and other good stuff that'll make it a little more appealing aesthetically anyway. But uh, I certainly appreciate Matt and Mars for joining us and allowing us to uh, look a little more deeply into uh, the wonderful music that they have brought to us. And as I, as I do every time I'm on the air with the radio show, I encourage all of you to please support all of these wonderful independent synth pop artists that we have uh, that are out there creating music. Follow them on social media, uh, whether it's Facebook or Twitter, uh, give their pages a like, and above all, buy their music, especially if they have a Bandcamp page. Uh, the artist makes uh, much more going directly to them uh, if you purchase their recordings on Bandcamp. And um, there is just so much talent out there. And just, just to call out some of them that are here in the event tonight, of course, we've got George from Alien Skin. We've got uh, Matt and Mars from uh, Matthias and Mars. We have Brian B from Mind Machine and Black Light. Um, we've got Eric C. Powell, I believe, is uh, in here somewhere with us. And uh, Pierre, Monsieur Pierrot from uh, uh, Toronto, Canada is with us. And uh, Ron and Edgar from reactive uh in kentucky big shout out to those guys and uh we also have let's see uh, of course darwin mcdee the legend himself got to say hi to darren again and uh of course to all the wonderful fans uh may thanks so much for joining us and tuning in tonight and uh rafa i don't see you but uh que onda? <laughs> how you doing yeah. buddy? he's uh, in the other room uh, <laughs> and uh i see uh mark Ortega, I don't know you, but I'm happy you're here. <laughs> yeah, that uh, Mark, he was Digital Soldiers with me back in the 90s. So that's, oh, yeah. Fantastic. Cool. All righty. Well, awesome. Thank you again, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, anybody have anything else they'd like to add, subtract, multiply, or divide before we go? No. No? All right. One final recommendation. Those of you that are music, big, uh, my, my fellow musicians, if you haven't yet, try out the new VSTs that Cherry Audio are releasing. Oh my gosh. Awesome. The, um, I still haven't tried out the eight voice yet, but uh, I have been using, what is it? The poly mode, uh, that's the, uh, the poly Moog uh, VST. Oh, good heavens. I am just 
in love, over the moon for that. And of course, their Juno 106, the DC 106. Love, love, love that. that Jim, Jim, you're going to absolutely love the, the eight voice. It's, it's unreal. Is it? Yes. Right on. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm a big, big Oberheim. Uh, I love the classic old Oberheim synthesizers. Always wanted an OBXA. And I'll be the first one to admit if Behringer, whether, whether it's Behringer that releases a clone or if uh, Sequential actually uh, releases an OBXA, as the rumor is, uh, I'm getting one because <laughs> I always wanted one. I always wanted uh, an OBXA and not just because of uh, Eddie Van Halen. I'll, I'll, I'll throw that out there. <laughs> but uh, right on. Well, thanks again, everybody. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for supporting the soul of synth pop. Thank you for being here for this debut episode. And uh, I hope that you'll join me for future episodes. And certainly if there's anything that I can ever do to assist you with promoting your bands or, or getting your music out there on my show, please let me know. And again, once I post this to the, uh, the YouTube channel, I'll be looking for the link on that through the, uh, the Soul of Synth Pop Facebook page. But uh, once you find the uh, Facebook channel, if you wouldn't mind subscribing and hitting that uh, bell button so that you can get notified, I promise I won't spam the, uh, <laughs> the YouTube channel with, with anything other than, uh, than synth pop related stuff. So with that, everybody, oh, again, a very sincere thank you to uh, both Matt and uh, to Mars. Uh, they are one of my, my favorite duos that are out there. Uh, could not be two of the, the nicest uh, souls that are out there, genuine, good human beings, good people. And uh, I love both of them dearly. And uh, it's an honor for me to not only play their music on their show and to host this event, but to count both of them as, uh, as very good friends of mine. And uh, yeah. indeed to all of you uh, that are here that uh, uh, were there and, and offering kind words and support uh, when my mother passed away uh, last month, that was a, was a very rough time for me. And, and uh, the, the kind words and, and uh, the support that everybody offered me during that time uh, I'll, I'll never be able to, to thank you folks enough for it. So, so thank you very much uh, on behalf of my family. And uh, just uh, you guys are awesome. Keep doing what you're doing and uh, just have a fantastic week. Okay. Thanks, Jim. All right. Thank you very much. Right. Thank, thank you, everybody. Thanks, guys. Take you're care. Amazing. Thanks, Take care. Jim. Thank you so much, Jim. You got it. Everybody. Thanks, John. Bye, guys. See you, Eric. Take care, buddy. Bye, guys. We'll see you. Thanks, Jim. Well, I like that, Brian. Thank you, May. <laughs> <laughs> Albondigas. <laughs> oh, see see right. you Saturday, Jim. Pinche tacos. <laughs> <laughs> right on. We'll see you, buddy. Take care. Yeah, we'll, we'll see you on Saturday. That sounds good to me. Sounds good. <laughs> Is, uh, uh, make sure you tell Mark I said hi. and uh, I will. Yeah, yeah, we'll have. Yeah, we got, we got, yeah, we're, we're good to go. Right on. Looking forward to it. Cool. That's going to right. be exciting. Can't wait. <laughs> we'll see. I don't know. <laughs> right on. not, not as exciting as you and Matt, I don't think, but yeah, it was fun. That was really cool. Right on. All right. Thanks, everybody. Take care. Thank you, guys. Hey, nice Jim, you, guys. you get your, your ring light to work the right way? Uh, well, I don't I mean, know if you've been able to see the reflection coming off my glasses. I have like really... For some reason, these new glasses I have are like super reflective. Okay, I can see yeah. them now. Yeah. <laughs> so, but no, it looks great. You look great. Cool. Thank you. I, I was using this. It was too bright. I was like, oh, right there. <laughs> it's kind of like that movie Leprechaun. You're like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, it. I guess it works. So. Right on. Good. Good. Good to know. I'm. You, now you guys know why I have a voice, uh, why I'm more cut out for radio than video. I mean, you have to put the widescreen to get me, get all of me in there. <laughs> oh, stop, stop. <laughs> right on. Well, thanks, everybody. You guys are awesome. And uh, I will uh, definitely see you guys, hopefully, on Saturday afternoon when we do the, the Darwin McDee and Mark Bebb uh, Zoom Spotlight Series. Should be awesome. Good. Looking good night, forward to it. All right. Sure. Take care, guys. Bye, guys. Yeah. See you soon. Bunnies. Bunnies are awesome. <laughs> we'll see you. <ya. laughs>